Hey everyone, today's video is a bit different than last year's Best Archaeology of 2022. You see, there is a pretty common trope that floats around the internet, pulled out by pseudo archaeologists, conspiracy theorists, and armchair experts, that says that archaeologists are stuck in our ways, resistant to change, refuse to consider rewriting history by ignoring new discoveries and insisting on sticking to our predetermined narrative. Honestly, that is absolute <laughs> Archaeological discoveries rewrite history all the time. The difference lies in that we do it with proper methodology, scientific study, and debate. What's more, we don't just focus on rewriting big headline grabbing facts. A lot of the times it's smaller, more mundane things that the average person could easily miss. Archaeologists, I will admit, aren't great about communicating what we find outside of our discipline. Today, that stops in an effort to show you that yes, we rewrite and change history with our work, I've put together for you a list of discoveries from 2023 that have changed what we thought we knew about the past. This entire list was curated and made based on my own subjective opinion of stories that I saw and I think are potentially quite revolutionary for this year. Uh, that doesn't mean that anything that I didn't include didn't rewrite history or that's only limited to these things. It happens everywhere. I, I had to, to stop listing things somewhere. <laughs> from DNA analysis challenging our perception of ancient gender roles to finds from multiple sites pushing back the dates of human development and migration around the world. 2023 has seen some major changes in the archaeological and historical records. So grab your trowels and join me on a journey through time as we piece together the puzzle of humanity's rich and diverse heritage. Don't forget to take a few seconds to subscribe or like to help support me in keeping the channel going and tell the algorithm to promote it to new viewers. Every little bit of engagement helps. All right, everyone, let's dig in. A lot of our rewrites this year come from the application of relatively new technologies to pre-existing collections revealing surprising results that contradict our initial conclusions. Ancient DNA analysis in particular has led to several revelations and surprises. Using a small piece of someone's preserved remains, this method gives us previously unknown information about an individual's movement and places that they lived throughout their lifetime, disease, and biological sex. It can be particularly useful when there is not enough of a person's skeleton to do a full osteological analysis via our regular methods. I have three case studies to present to you today where ADNA and paleogenomics changed history in 2023. In January, an international team of researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology announced that they had sequenced over 100 genomes of Bronze Age people from the Aegean. This allowed them to reconstruct the kinship of the inhabitants of a 16th century BCE Mycenaean house, the first family tree that has so far been genetically reconstructed for the entire ancient Mediterranean region. This family tree rewrote our knowledge of familial and intermarriage relationships in Bronze Age Greece. The study showed that on Crete and the other Greek islands, as well as on the mainland, it was very common to marry your first cousin 4,000 years ago, not just a practice for elites. Looking at other ancient genomes published from different regions of the world, it seems that such a strict system of kin marriage did not exist anywhere else at this time. This finding came as a complete surprise to the researchers and raised even more questions than it answered. In May, another genetic study found that some of the first humans to arrive in the Americas came during and after the last ice age in two distinct migrations from what is now China and suggesting the genetic ancestry of Native Americans is more diverse and complex than previously assumed, a topic that has already been hotly debated for many years. During the second migration, the same lineage of people settled in Japan, which helps explain similarities in prehistoric arrowheads and spears found in the Americas, China, and Japan. It had previously been thought that ancient Siberians who crossed over a land bridge linking modern Russia and Alaska were the sole ancestors of Native Americans. However, these findings support more recent hypotheses that the more diverse sources from Asia could be connected to an ancient DNA lineage responsible for founding populations across the Americas. In August, one of the biggest headlines of the year featured the results of a new DNA analysis of the remains of Utsi the Iceman. 
directly dated to 3550 to 3120 BCE, the results of genetic sequencing of his remains back in 2012 suggested that he had pale skin, brown eyes, and steppe ancestry. Subsequent recreations of what he looked like conventionally showed him as having long, unkempt hair and pale skin. The ancestry result in particular was puzzling, as other research had suggested that steppe people weren't present in Europe until a thousand years after Utsi died. Not to mention that his remains had been found with littler hair and much darker skin than what the sequencing results showed. It was known at the time that the genome wasn't sequenced perfectly. Since 2012, ADNA technology has improved markedly, hence the reasoning for a new study. The results from this latest sequencing showed that the steppe ancestry probably stemmed from modern DNA contamination. Instead, the team found an astonishing level of Anatolian farmer ancestry, hinting that Utsi's lineage was genetically isolated from other Europeans at the time. Skin pigmentation markers revealed that he had much more melanin in his skin than the previous result, and he also carried genetic markers for male pattern baldness both results which match the state of his remains and when they were found. Genes conferring light skin tones didn't become prevalent until 4,000 to 3,000 years ago when early farmers started pl eating plant-based diets and didn't get as much vitamin D from fish and meat as hunter-gatherers. As Utsi and other ancient people's DNAs illustrate, people that lived in Europe between 40,000 and 8,000 years ago were as dark as people in Africa, which makes a lot of sense because that's where we all came from. Until recently, we have always imagined that Europeans became light-skinned much faster. As Utsi's results now show, it seems that this happened actually quite late in human history. Another technological method being newly applied to archaeological material that I want to highlight is the analysis of sexually dimorphic peptides in tooth enamel. Essentially, it's a new way of determining the biological sex of a skeleton via the teeth. The ability to assign biological sex to human skeletal remains is a fundamental requirement in archaeology, paleoanthropology, and medical legal sciences. While DNA sequencing can be used for this purpose as well, it is expensive, time-consuming, and often fails due to the poor quality of remaining DNA. This new method is also more accurate than the traditional visual methods that examine the pelvis as well. Because our teeth are hard, highly mineralized, and chemically stable, they preserve incredibly well in archaeological context and contain a wealth of information about our lives. Application of this analysis to prehistoric human remains has yielded results that are likely going to significantly change the way sex and gender of archaeological human remains will be approached in future. In 2023, use of this new method made headlines by upending the previously assumed biological sex and gender of two burials who lived in very, very different times and places. In 2008, archaeologists discovered ivory tusks, amber, ostrich eggshells, and a crystal dagger in a 5,000-year-old grave in southwest Spain. As well as containing a high number of valuable goods, the grave was a rare example of a single occupancy burial, signs that it belonged to someone of very high status, potentially an elite leader. The occupant of the burial was first identified as a probable young male between 17 and 25 years of age at the time of his death, based on standard anthropological analysis of the pelvis. They dubbed this individual the Ivory Man. In July 2023, a new study of the Ivory Man using the dental enamel peptides analysis technique showed that this person was actually biologically female. This is just one of the first examples of how the new analysis technique can provide highly reliable sex determinations even for poorly preserved human remains. Archaeologists from a different project also announced in July that they had solved the mystery of the sex of the occupant of a 2,000-year-old kiss grave on the island of Scilly off the coast of Cornwall in the UK. Since the grave's discovery and excavation in 1999, Archaeologists had wondered whether the stone-lined burial chamber contained the remains of a male or female. This question arose due to the burial's unique set of grave goods. A sword in a scabbard and a shield, objects commonly associated with men, but also a brooch and a bronze mirror adorned with what appears to be a sun disk that is usually associated with women. 
The grave is unique in Iron Age Western Europe for containing both the mirror and sword items. Attempts to establish sex by traditional methods and DNA failed because of the disintegration of the bones. All that was left in the burial were small pieces of bone, teeth, and a dark soil stain where the body had once laid. A new study led by Historic England used the dental enamel peptides and determined the grave occupant was female. This discovery could shed light on the role of female warriors during a period in which violence between communities is thought to have been a fact of life and presents an exciting opportunity to change what we know and how we think about Iron Age gender roles. These two stories clearly show that gender roles in the Bronze and Iron Age were not as strictly binary as we previously thought. While new technological analysis methods have certainly claimed much of the spotlight here, that doesn't mean that good old-fashioned excavation and analysis and dating methods haven't been changing archaeological narratives as well. There were three excavation discoveries published from this past year that have impacted dates of human occupation and technological advancement. In June, the latest evidence from Ta Paling Cave in Laos determined that modern humans spread from Africa through Arabia and to Asia much earlier than previously thought pushing back our arrival time in mainland Southeast Asia by approximately 40,000 years. Strategic application of a variety of dating techniques to sediments, astalocyte tips, and bovine teeth revealed that there had been a human presence in this area for more than 56,000 years. Furthermore, the age of the lowest fossil found in this cave provided a timeline for modern human arrival in this region of between 86,000 to 68,000 years ago. In September, bioluminescence dating and stratigraphy analysis of five modified pieces of wood from a site at Kalimbo Falls in Zambia pushed back the dates for the earliest occupation of the site and earliest evidence for woodworking, giving researchers new insight into the advancement of hominin technology in the Middle Pleistocene era from 476,000 years ago. The two oldest pieces of wood consisted of two interlocking logs joined by an intentionally cut notch. Their discovery and dating mean that woodworking might predate the emergence of our own species. Scientists previously believed that the hominins who lived at Kalimbo during this time were nomadic foragers with little technological skill, but these new finds show that they were far more intelligent than we first gave them credit for. In October 2023, a team of scientists published a second paper with additional radiocarbon dates to support their 2021 claim that they had discovered human footprints in New Mexico's White Sands National Park, which were between 23,000 and 21,000 years old. The original paper from 2021 was met with much criticism and skepticism, as this result made the footprints at least 5,000 years older than the accepted date for human arrival to the Americas. For this new set of dates, the team extracted pollen from the same layers of sediment targeted in the first paper, which lie underneath between and on top of various sets of footprints. They also collected quartz grains from a layer of clay just above the oldest tracks. At a new lab, the pine tree pollen was isolated and radiocarbon dated. The quartz grains were also dated using optically stimulated luminescence to measure when the grain was last exposed to sunlight. The pollen returned dates between 23 and 21,000 years old, and the quartz grains return dates showing they were buried between 21,400 and 18,000 years ago, both of which correlate with the original 2021 results. Some skepticism remains, but researchers on both sides of the debate agree archaeologists should start looking for more sites like this to push the debate forward, which, if there are other sites of similar date out there, could end up like really, really majorly rewriting history. Our last rewrite for today is one of the most exciting, the discovery of the composition of Roman concrete. Famous for its self-healing longevity, the secret of its durability has puzzled researchers for decades and was long thought to have been due to the inclusion of volcanic ash in its composition. But in January, the results of a new study led by a team from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology showed otherwise. Instead of ash, the MIT team focused on small white inclusions in the concrete known as lime clasts, which in the past have been dismissed as the result of poor mixing practices or low quality raw materials. They determined that the lime clasts were extremely rich in calcium and when cracks formed, they commonly pass through these lime clasts. Then when the water enters these cracks, it dissolves the clasts 
thus providing a calcium rich solution that recrystallizes and effectively glues the cracks back together. Closer examination also prompted questions about manufacturing, specifically relating to when in the concrete mixing process, quicklime, a highly reactive caustic powder flaked with water to produce a paste, was added. The team tested their hypotheses on concrete made using different processes, which was then deliberately cracked, and water was then run through these cracks. While the control sample made the usual way remained broken, the concrete containing quicklime sealed up the cracks and stopped water flow completely within two weeks. In addition to revolutionizing and rewriting our understanding of Roman construction, it is hoped that this discovery can also help develop longer lasting concrete for modern construction, thus reducing the environmental impact of the industry and making more resilient modern structures. All right, everyone, time to pack up our trowels for today. That's everything for this video. As you can see, archeologists are not afraid of rewriting history. It's actually a very common result from our work. And it's not something that's likely to stop anytime soon as technology gets developed even farther and new sites are found, tested, and in some cases retested and analyzed. We just prefer to do our rewriting via the scientific method instead of just asking questions and distracting you from our lack of evidence with flashy documentaries. The stories featured today have already all appeared on my channel with more detail about them in my monthly archaeology news videos, along with many other major discoveries and stories from this year, all of which arguably rewrite history. You can find this and more in my archaeology news playlist now that we're done for today in case you need something more to watch. But back to today, did you like this video? Did you learn something new? Is there anything important that I missed? Obviously, this list that I curated today is based on my own personal opinion, which is subjective. So there might be some things out there that other people thought were more important that I didn't include. It's not necessarily on purpose. Depending on what you did think, don't forget to comment, like the video, or subscribe to the channel before you leave. If you are feeling extra generous, you can give me a super thanks or go to my Ko-fi page and support me and the channel with a small donation. Everything that we receive gets put right back into making the channel better. Taking a few seconds to support me in any way helps the channel grow and shows the algorithm that people are interested in real archeology, span not pseudoscience, not just headlines, and every watch helps us fight the good fight against sensationalism and conspiracy theories. Thank you so much for watching. Stay curious, and I hope to see you on my next adventure into the world of archeology. span